Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me again today. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing our series Post Tenebrous Lux or After Darkness Light again today. But before we begin with the reading and the sermon, uh, let's just take a moment to pray and to, to ask God to settle our hearts so that we can listen to him. Let's pray. God, we come to you because we believe that you love us. And we know, Lord, that we need you. We pray, God, that you would help us to have the faith now to truly come to you, to sit in your presence, to hear what you're saying to us. Take away the stress and the busyness of our normal, everyday lives, Lord, whatever week we've had, whatever we're worried about. And help us, Lord, to receive from you the blessing of your word. Help us, Lord, to listen to what your word says. To truly receive it. To seek to understand it. And to be prepared in humility and faith and love to live by it. Lord, I pray that today when I speak, when I preach, that I would be delivering your message faithfully and clearly. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to be... Um, Looking at the culmination of all the things that we've we've looked at so far, we've looked at little um, you know glimpses of the light of redemption uh, in in the Bible up to now, and today we get to look at the incarnation, which is when that light bursts out and we can see it. So let's read John's Gospel, chapter one. We're going to read the prologue of John's Gospel, which is the first eighteen verses, which is a, a, a poetic section that contains the major themes of John's gospel. And it's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful passages of scripture, that I think, anyway. Um, so let's read John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. So read along with me if you can, or, or listen carefully if you prefer. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human desire or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Amen. So today, as I said, we resume our series, After Darkness Light, where we look at God's work of redemption throughout the Bible. And today we get to the incarnation, when God himself came amongst us in this 
dark and broken world. Hope has been a big feature on the news lately. While we're still being battered by the storm that is the COVID-19 pandemic and our health services are just about hanging on, we're beginning to make hopeful plans. Plans to distribute and administer vaccines to hopefully see the back of this thing. The end of this awful period is still frustratingly far off and it's still hard going, very hard. But the end is in sight now. And that can give people hope and it can help them to hold on and to continue to play their part in keeping their neighbours safe by staying at home, in taking the precautions that we all need to take, in, in missing out on the things that we've been missing out on for so long. It can just help us to hang on a little bit longer. In world news, we recently had the inauguration of a new president in the United States. For many people in America and around the world, this marked the end of an awful, shameful period and the beginning of a more hopeful time. For some, this meant the dashing of their hopes. These things don't mean the end of struggle. We've all still got our hands full with many difficult things, but they are signs that things can be better. They're hopeful. Today we're looking at the prologue at the beginning of John's Gospel. This is only a few verses, but you can see right from the start that this is different from Matthew and Mark and Luke. The other Gospel accounts lead you to see that Jesus is God, the Son, through his words and his acts. You hear Jesus' words and his deeds, and through them you can come to see his identity. John, on the other hand, starts his account by diving right into the deep end with this beautiful declaration of the divine identity of Jesus Christ. And here in just these 18 verses, you have John's gospel in miniature. And the heart of this gospel is laid clear in verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. God himself has come into our world of sin and darkness to make us sinful rebels his children. Receive Jesus by faith and you will be God's child. Gospel, the word, it's a Christian term, but it comes from a word that just means good news, a good message. The Christian gospel is the true good news. There is no better story, no better message, but everybody, whether they are Christian or not, whether they're religious or not, everybody has a gospel, a good message. You see, everybody, everybody knows that there's something wrong with the world with this life. Everybody knows sadness and pain or even just discomfort. We're, we're born into this world crying, giving out because it's too cold and too bright and too noisy out here. Different people have different theories about what's wrong with the world and how it can be fixed. What do you think is wrong with the world and how can it be fixed? You have a fix in mind. That's your message of hope. That's your gospel. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, is a story, a true story about the events that happened in history of what God has done to fix what is at the root of the suffering and brokenness of this world. What truly is wrong with the world? This prologue in John's gospel is a beautiful poem. It's describing the eternal God himself, God the Son, coming into this world of darkness and giving us light, life, grace and truth and the right for those who receive him to become children of God. In this series, we've seen how God brings light into darkness, how God makes things better. And in this prologue, we can see some of the glimpses of God's light in the darkness that have preceded the coming of Jesus. We can see those things that we've already seen in this series. So in verses one to three, John, speaking of Jesus as the word, tells us that he was with God and was God, and through him all things were made. So all that beauty and that order, the very good creation that we read about in Genesis chapter 1, all of it was made through Jesus. He was there. In verse 17, we're reminded of the Exodus and God giving his law through Moses. Verse 14 echoes the time when God dwelt amongst his people in the tabernacle and, and later the temple. 
we see another great work of redemption in God sending John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus by bearing witness to the light that was coming. All glimpses of the great dawn that was coming. And here it is, the incarnation, God the Son made flesh to dwell amongst us. The light shining in the darkness. The gospel is true good news. It's a true story of true hope. It's a story of the triumph of light over darkness. John writes in verse five, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. What is the darkness? It's this broken world of sin that we live in. Whatever you think is wrong with the world, greed, hatred, violence, inequality, sickness and suffering, at the root of it all is this brokenness and rebelliousness that we call sin. Sin is offensive to a holy God. God hates sin. And whether you would use the word sin or not, you hate it too. Sin isn't just some kind of naughtiness. Sin cuts us off from our creator. So we cannot have that relationship with God that we were made for. It prevents us from being truly human. It prevents us from being what we were made to be. Sin cuts us off from each other. It damages relationships. We hate people. And even the people that we love, we sometimes end up hurting. Sin leads us even to hurt ourselves and to hate ourselves. Sin makes us use the world and the resources of, of the world in greedy ways that hurt nature. This brokenness in us causes us to do things that we hate. So God hates sin. And so do I. And what is the holy God's response to us sinful people in this sinful world? When we hate him and ignore him and rebel against him, when we hurt each other, God's response is to come and rescue us. That light that shines in the darkness is Jesus Christ. He told us plainly himself in, in John chapter 8, verse 12. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. <clears throat> Jesus is not overcome by the darkness of this world. He was not overcome in his life, nor in his death. Jesus met the darkness of sin, the darkness of this world, head on when he went to the cross. He let evil empty itself on him. Though Jesus never sinned, he still died a sinner's death. He endured the cost of sin on our behalf. He died, but he was not overcome. He rose again. And he lives and he reigns now and forevermore. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. But what's that got to do with you? So God came down to a sinful world and was not overcome by the darkness of this place. Where do you fit in? The message at the heart of the gospel is found in verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's the message at the heart of John's gospel account. John puts it a different way at the end of this gospel. After telling the story of all the miraculous signs that Jesus performed, John writes, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And Jesus himself put it and yet another way. In that verse from chapter 8 that I quoted earlier, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You want to go from darkness to light to have that relationship with God that you were created for, to have true life, receive Jesus. He's come for you. Receive him. Don't reject him. Believe in him. Believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Hear him now calling you to follow him now and all the days of your life. And then you will have the light of life. You will have 
life in Jesus' name. You will be God's child. You will have that light that cannot be overcome by the darkness. You will shine it into the darkness of this world as you follow Jesus. So as you look around you, and as you watch the news, I'm sure you can see a lot of what's wrong with the world. And perhaps you can see some hope in those situations getting better. And it's wonderful to have that hope. But don't settle for the little solutions. Don't settle for treating the symptoms. Look for the cure. Look for the true hope. The hope that will not be overcome. The light that will not be overcome. Look for the light that is not overcome by the darkness. Look for Jesus. Because one day the darkness will all truly be gone. Overcome by the light. Know Jesus. Receive him today and every day. And you will have the light of Christ now. And we will have it forever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, we pray that you would sustain us in these difficult times. We pray, Lord God, for those who are currently sick. We pray that, that you would give them strength and that you would heal them, Lord. But more importantly, Lord, that they would know you even in this terrible situation, that they would truly know you. That they know you are with them, that they would know your love. We pray for our health service. Lord God, it is just hanging on. We pray, Lord God, that they would be able to hold on, that they would still be able to treat people people with COVID and people with other uh, illnesses or injuries, Lord God, that need attention urgently. We pray, Lord God, that you would protect them from infection and that you would give them the strength to do their work, Lord God. Give them the energy that they need because they must be so tired, Lord. We pray that you would help the country to, to unite in, in doing what we can to prevent another surge. In doing what we can to love our neighbours by keeping our distance. As strange as that sounds, Lord. Help us to hold on. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray that, Lord God, that you would comfort them. That they would know that they are not alone. We pray, Lord God, for the distribution, the, the rollout of, the, of this vaccine and on other vaccines that will hopefully be coming soon, Lord. We pray that it would go smoothly that it will get to the people who need it. Lord God, we pray for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones, whether it was from COVID or something else, Lord God. This is a difficult time for those who mourn. We can't do funerals the way we should, really, the way we are used to. We can't gather around each other to grieve like, like we do so well in this country, Lord. So please sustain them. May they know that they are not alone. May they know that you, in fact, mourn with them. You know what it is like to feel pain and sadness like this. Lord God, we pray for those who work on the front lines in shops and um, just all those important jobs that keep this country going. We pray for protection for them. We pray for those in leadership, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom and that they would lead out of love for their community. 
And we take a moment of silence now to pray for the people that we know. The people you, Lord God, in your love and in your sovereignty have brought into our lives. So let's take a moment of silence to, to pray for those people now. Lord, we love these people, but we know that you love them more. And we pray that you would help them however they need that help, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me again today. God bless everyone. Bye now.